Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So we are uh, looking at uh, varying area duct flows in the context of quasi 1D flows, uh, quasi 1D assumption and uh, flow uh, is invisit and has no other uh, effects, only area is changing. Uh, as a consequence the flow within uh, varying area ducts uh, is taken as an isentropic flow. This is a very good uh, approximation to understand flows through nozzles, diffusers and so on. And in the previous class, we uh, looked at how the definition whether a particular duct is a nozzle or a diffuser uh, changes uh, as you move from different flow regimes from subsonic to uh, supersonic flow. Uh, in a subsonic flow, a duct which decreases area that is a convergent duct is a nozzle, it accelerates the flow, uh, while a duct which uh, increases area um, that is a divergent duct, uh, it decreases uh, velocity when the incoming velocity is uh, subsonic, it behaves like a diffuser. Uh, but the moment you go to a supersonic flow that is the incoming flow is supersonic, then uh, a convergent duct that is a, a duct which decreases area. Uh, with an incoming supersonic flow, uh, the uh, velocity actually decreases. So, a convergent duct behaves like a diffuser. So, a supersonic diffuser implies a convergent duct. Similarly, if you go and increase area with an incoming supersonic flow, uh, then you find that uh, velocity uh, increases or it behaves like a nozzle. So, a divergent duct is a supersonic nozzle. So, this is uh, this behavior one has to always understand and uh, keep in mind when we discuss varying area ducts. So, now if you want to move from uh, subsonic flow to supersonic flow or uh, supersonic flow to subsonic flow, you need to combine the ducts in a certain way and uh, the way it is combined is always a minimum area is produced and at the minimum area the Mach number is uh, 1. Uh, so, these kind of ducts which uh, combine the two principles are convergent divergent ducts. So, you have various kinds of varying area ducts and they behave differently in uh, different uh, flow regimes. And we were now uh, we had begun looking at quantitative aspects of uh, this understanding. And the previous class we had looked at uh, the area ratio relation A by A star. Okay, we had looked at that relation uh, and that was done from uh, continuity equations uh, we had derived it. Now, uh, we also look at um, how we can write the mass flow rate through a duct. What is mass flow rate from m dot is uh, rho A v. Now, depending on uh, various applications, uh, you may need to find the mass flow rate um, uh, because for example, propulsion uh, app based applications thrust uh, produced is dependent on uh, m dot v e that is mass flow rate multiplied by the exist, uh, exhaust uh, velocity. So, mass flow rate uh, is an important term there. Uh, similarly, in uh, uh, applications like wind tunnels, you need to know what is the mass flow rate happening to the entire system. So, uh, mass the calculation of mass flow rate is quite uh, routine uh, in uh, uh, engineering devices and uh, many different conditions may be known to you. Uh, so, uh, how do we calculate m dot in different conditions? So, uh, First is uh, of course, m dot is rho a v, but uh, generally uh, density is not uh, known a priori, it is usually 
a calculated variable something that is uh, generally measured is pressures and temperatures uh, static pressure static temperature. So, uh, can we express this in terms of static pressure and temperature and it can be done because rho is uh, p by r t p by r t um, multiplied by area multiplied by uh, velocity. It is also useful to express velocity in terms of Mach number p by r t a multiplied by Mach number multiplied by area uh, sorry the acoustic speed a. Uh, so, uh, you get p by r t a m multiplied by a and a is square root of gamma r t. So, m dot is um, p by square root of r uh, t uh, multiplied by square root of gamma multiplied by a multiplied by m. So, uh, this is the equation if you know uh, what is the static pressure uh, temperature Mach number at a particular location in any duct we can find the mass flow rate. But uh, generally uh, static pressure temperature uh, may not be known something that is known is um, the reservoir conditions uh, which is uh, pressure temperature measured in a uh, condition where the velocities are very small velocities are approaching uh, 0. Uh, the velocities may be uh, a few uh, meters per second, uh, but they may not be very high and the flow need not be compressible in this uh, region that kind of a system is the reservoir you can uh, look at various uh, uh, such uh, applications where you can have a huge tank and then the flow is taking place from the tank and then goes to a set of pipes and some varying area ducts. Then the velocity in the huge tank uh, it will generally be very small. Then if pressure of tank and temperature of tank is known then uh, the pressure and temperature at such low speeds will approximate will be almost equal to to the stagnation quantities p0 and um, t0. So, uh, because of this expressing uh, mass flow rate in terms of p0 and t0 is also uh, very useful and uh, so uh, you can convert this. So, uh, you can use the relations p by p0 is uh, 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square whole power minus gamma by gamma minus 1 and t by t naught is 1 by 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square. So, uh, while we are actually looking at square root of uh, t by t naught. So, this has a 1 by 2 uh, attached to it. So, using this if you uh, convert this particular uh, equation in terms of p naught and t naught then the uh, equation is a square root of gamma by r p 0 by square root of t naught m multiplied by 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square raised to minus gamma plus 1 by uh, 2 into gamma minus 1. So, here we have expressed uh, m dot as a function of uh, gamma uh, p naught t naught area and Mach number. So, uh, there is another form in which you can write the mass flow rate starting from rho a v uh, you can always go back to rho a v, uh, but these are various forms in which in which the mass flow rate can be written and we will see there are other forms also. Since the uh, mass flow rate is uh, constant m dot is constant now we can relate. Uh, so, uh, the two areas. So, uh, we get um, uh, square root of gamma by r p naught by square root of t naught multiplied by a 1 uh, multiplied by m uh, 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m 1 square m 1 square minus 1 by 2 gamma plus 1 by gamma minus 1 is equal to 
square root of gamma by r p0 by square root of t0 a2 m1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m2 m2 square and the same power minus 1 by 2 gamma plus 1 by gamma minus 1. So, in a varying area duct it is isentropic p naught and t naught are constant. So, they just cancel off on both the sides you can get a 1 by a 2 the expression is um, over here and uh, a particular reference area that we discussed even last time is when uh, Mach number goes to 1. So, m 1 is 1 and m 2 is equal to 1. So, that uh, particular area ratio is a by a star and a by a star is 1 by m multiplied by 2 by gamma plus 1, 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square whole power half gamma plus 1 by gamma minus 1. This was derived uh, same principles uh, expressed in different ways. Um, this is something that uh, you have to uh, understand uh, depending on the variables that you know in a particular problem. Uh, the same uh, uh, quantity can be um, expressed in different ways. You know static pressure, temperature and Mach number, then you can calculate mass flow rate using a certain relation. Uh, if you know the stagnation pressure and uh, temperature or what are known as reservoir conditions, mm, then you can use another expression or you can always go back calculate the basic variables rho a v and mass flow rate can be calculated m dot is equal to uh, rho a v. Okay. So, now uh, uh, how does a by a star behave? Okay. So, for this we plot a by a star, but uh, immediately we can do a differentiation also and understand what we are looking is how does Mach number change as area changes d m by a. So, d m by a is always uh, less than 0 for uh, subsonic flows Mach number less than 1 and d m by a is always greater than 0 for uh, Mach numbers uh, greater than 1. Okay. So, uh, this is what is known okay. if you can differentiate, but uh, uh, easier way is let us just plot it. So, if you plot uh, a by a star, uh, so a by a star is here uh, versus Mach number. So, here it is plotted m versus a by a star, uh, then you will find that uh, as Mach number uh, increases from subsonic flow. So, this is 0, uh, this is from very low uh, Mach numbers it is going up uh, to Mach 1. Uh, area ratio that is a by a star that is often refers to as star area ratio or the area ratio sometimes uh, used just like uh, area ratio. So, the area ratio uh, decreases right. Uh, after Mach 1 if you further increase uh, Mach number then area ratio increases. So, um, the uh, area ratio has a minimum point at Mach number equal to 1. So, if you consider a varying area duct in general, then the minimum point uh, where the area reaches a minimum point that is where you expect Mach number to be equal to uh, 1. Okay. The expectation is that Mach number reaches 1 at the minimum area uh, point. Okay. Uh, now, this uh, figure also gives us an idea on how to understand the behavior of uh, flows. So, if you are in the subsonic domain and uh, the area ratio uh, decreases, so area ratio decreases and Mach number increases. Okay. So, you can understand from this graph uh, easily that and in supersonic flow uh, the Mach number will uh, increase when you increase area ratio. So, area ratio increases supersonic flow um, Mach number increases right. Uh, so, uh, these are the important points uh, and a, a convergent divergent duct. So, where there is a convergent and uh, divergence included uh, then uh, there what can happen is um, 
you can have the flow going all the way from subsonic to supersonic passing through Mach number 1 uh, at uh, minimum area. Okay. So, this part is important the same thing will occur if you go from supersonic to subsonic all the way. Um, then another important uh, point that you should observe in this uh, graph is that uh, if you take any area ratio in particular. Uh, so, let me draw a curve here. So, if I know A by A star, so A by A star is known is known then there are two solutions to uh, Mach number. Okay. So, you have uh, a subsonic solution and a supersonic solution. So, what do you observe whether you observe subsonic flow or a supersonic flow at a particular uh, area has to depend on other factors. Uh, these are pressures and uh, pressure ratios. So, we will come to it soon, um, uh, but this has to be understood uh, for a given uh, Mach number you can always find an area ratio. So, given a Mach number you will get an area ratio that is given here, uh, but for a given area ratio you can you always get two solutions one can have one can be subsonic the other can be supersonic. So, um, this has to be uh, clearly understood and when you uh, solve problems you should always look for uh, whether the solution is meaningful in the context of the uh, problem which one should be used whether it should be subsonic or it should be supersonic. We will soon come to these um, uh, fine details. So, uh, so, it is not always uh, necessary that at the minimum area Mach number should go to 1. Uh, if you are moving from a uh, if uh, during the uh, motion through the convergent divergent varying area duct the flow passes from a subsonic region to a supersonic region then uh, it has to go through uh, a Mach number equal to 1 at minimum area. Uh, this is for a completely shock free flow when shocks are present things change a little bit we will come to that also soon. Uh, but uh, you could if the uh, pressure ratios across the duct uh, do not support such a uh, flow behavior then you can always have changes like uh, first there is you started off with the subsonic flow point 0.1. Uh, there was a convergence. So, the flow accelerated uh, increased its Mach number, uh, but then uh, the uh, pressure ratios across the duct did not support uh, its further acceleration. Uh, so, it reached a certain increased Mach number at this point. So, m, m I will call it as the m throat usually uh, this small area is called as the throat and m throat m throat is greater than m 1, but it is less than 1. So, in that case uh, if now further area is increased uh, then the flow will not go supersonic because it is still subsonic at the minimum area. So, it will uh, decrease its velocity. So, it will become subsonic again. So, you see that uh, various combinations can happen similarly in supersonic flows. Uh, in this case for example, you started with uh, the same duct, uh, you start with the supersonic flow, convergent duct uh, Mach number decreases, but it does not decrease all the way to 1 and then uh, further the area is increased, then you see it again increases uh, the Mach number. So, uh, looking at varying area ducts you have to be uh, careful. Uh, and understand these concepts very uh, carefully. Now, let us uh, look at uh, the sum total of all the things uh, in a varying area duct there is changes in velocity, there is change in pressure, temperature, uh, density. Uh, so, uh, we can look at all the equations uh, together and uh, with uh, d a by a basically the area change as a forcing function it is it's, it's like a forcing you are uh, changing area and you want to know what happens to all these quantities pressure, temperature, velocity, Mach number uh, and 
another parameter is the impulse equation impulse uh, equation f is p a multiplied by 1 plus comma m square this comes from uh, p a plus rho v square a which is uh, nothing but uh, and it uh, at a particular uh, section quasi 1 d flow you integrate the uh, momentum equation then uh, at any particular section you can define this quantity p a plus rho v square a it comes from the momentum equation and this is nothing but the impulse that is imparted there uh, it is often used in uh, uh, discussions of uh, propulsion systems so p a is uh, you can take out p a this becomes 1 plus um, rho v square by p and p a 1 plus gamma 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 p by rho is a square so this is p a multiplied by 1 plus gamma m square so that is the impulse function this is also a parameter so uh, this way what uh, if we look at all these changes together so speed of sound mach number uh, we write these equations in uh, terms of uh, uh, d a by a as a variable as a change and uh, collect all the equations together and write it in a matrix form with d a by a as a forcing function ok. Then we will know uh, how each uh, quantity is getting affected um, by d a by a ok. So, this is nothing but uh, you are expressing all the equations that have written over here for various quantities uh, in terms of a matrix and then uh, this can be solved uh, this matrix can be solved uh, you can express d p by p solely as a function of Mach number gamma and d a by a ok. So, this can be expressed so you get a, an expression for this this can be done uh, by means of by applying Kramer's rule. Uh, you can use nowadays you have uh, Mathematica and Maple kind of symbolic mathematical operators to uh, do these operations and you can get this quite uh, readily easily. So, you can uh, do this use Kramer's rule solve the equations and you can get d m by m as a function of only uh, Mach number ok. So, uh, 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 as a function of only d a by a, d a by a is the forcing gamma and Mach number. So, like this we can write for all uh, the parameters d m by m, d p by p, d rho by rho, d t by t, uh, change in velocity, change in speed of sound, change in impulse function. So, how are they affected by area change? So, if you look at that Mm, this is for a perfect gas calorically perfect gas uh, d a is uh, less than 0 that means convergent uh, duct, uh, but then the flow behavior changes between uh, subsonic and supersonic flows. So, if the flow is uh, subsonic then uh, Mach number increases pressure decreases density decreases temperature decreases velocity increases. Uh, the impulse function decreases uh, there is no change in entropy entropy is constant. Uh, similarly, if you uh, go and look at uh, convergent ducts and uh, supersonic flow then you know that Mach number decreases uh, pressure increases de density increases temperature increases velocity decreases impulse function decreases. So, uh, in one sh uh, shot you can get how all these variables uh, change this uh, kind of uh, representation is called and uh, where these coefficients are called as influence coefficients. So, d m by m is influenced by uh, d a by a by a coefficient which is 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square should be there it is missing m 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square by 1 minus m square ok. So, 1 plus comma minus 1 by 2 m square by 1 minus m square. 
So, these are influence coefficients they are very useful to uh, look at. So, similarly d p by p this is the influence coefficient for d p by p uh, they are very useful. Now, we are looking at each individual uh, forcing function now we are looking uh, only at uh, area change uh, in later classes we may look at uh, friction and we may look at heat addition as separate uh, influencing parameters uh, on a duct flow. Uh, but uh, in general uh, these are not always separate uh, they are in some combined fashion usually uh, there will be both area change and friction or they can be both area change friction and heat addition occurring together. So, if you want to analyze such problems then uh, the influence coefficient method is a very useful uh, method to look at such problems. So, this uh, idea is being introduced uh, very early on, uh, but uh, later we will see how they can be combined together uh, in a special uh, uh, lecture on uh, combined effects of these problems. So, uh, uh, in the limit as various limits go that you have very small Mach numbers very large Mach numbers and at Mach number equal to 1 what happens to various uh, quantities like m star t by t naught p by p naught rho by rho naught area ratio for a varying area duct. So, it is an isentropic flow. So, in an isentropic flow uh, these are the expressions for the limiting cases. Okay. So, uh, with this uh, now we will look at uh, as it till now what we have been looking at is we have been looking at okay, there is an area change uh, what happens to velocity or Mach number when there is an area change what are uh, how do they behave. Okay. But will they actually behave in such a way you have a certain area uh, convergent for example, a convergent nozzle let us say. So, uh, you are providing a certain uh, flow to it okay, and you expect uh, a, there should be an increase in uh, velocity which should happen, uh, but then uh, for the flow to happen there should be some uh, pressure that needs to be provided. So, uh, always there is uh, you should not be considering these varying area ducts only uh, in uh, uh, context of only areas and Mach numbers you should also look at pressures. What happens if we do not provide uh, pressure ratios which are consistent uh, with the Mach number that needs to be um, uh, produced according to area ratio. So, these are the kind of problems. So, uh, it is not just uh, only area ratio and velocity you are there is a change in pressure also how are they mutually uh, dependent on each other. This is the uh, uh, focus of our attention in the uh, coming classes they will be different for nozzles and diffusers. So, we will treat them separately nozzles and uh, diffusers. So, next class we will start looking at uh, convergent nozzles.